Hi, we have exciting news when it comes to Hero Player, which is that Hero Player is now free with Nuke and Nuke X. This is exciting news because along with giving you a tool to review your shots in the context and in real time, it will fit into any existing pipelines you use. It means you will have a faster review turnaround and have the ability to collaborate between artists using the annotations inside of Hero Player and our other review products, while also being able to create and join a sync session. With Hero Player, we can view multiple versions of our shot that have come from other artists working on the same sequence or previous versions you have been working on. So if we jump into Nuke, here I am wanting to render out a few different versions of the shot I'm currently working on. So by using the right node, we can render multiple versions of our comp by adding a version number to the name of your render and then incrementing that version number using the Alt and the up and down arrows. So here you can see I've now changed it to version 3. Or we can increment the version number by saving our comp as a new version. Here you can see the file name of our comp is version 4, as is our right node. And then finally, I'll render one more version out. So now we have five versions of this comp ready to review. Once rendered, if we look at the file structure, you can see how the output rendered from Nuke has been rendered with the correct file structure and all of our versions have been saved and iterated correctly. Back in Hero Player, we can input our versions of our comp to review these in the context of our show and to make sure we're preserving the right look of our shot. There are a few ways we can import our versions into Hero Player. First, if we're wanting to review just our shots and start building a sequence, we can create a new project in Hero Player and import our versions directly into the project bin by either dragging and dropping from the file browser or by right clicking and going to import file or folder. If we import the folder, each version will be imported as an individual clip. If using import file, we can select on the version you want to view and only one clip will import into the bin. From here, we can view that version imported and play back in real time. To import the other versions we have of our shot, we can do this by right clicking on the item in the bin and going to versions, then scan for versions. This will look into that folder where we had rendered those other iterations and import the new versions of our comp. By using alt and the up and down arrow with the clip open in the viewer, we can cycle through the available versions. To view and compare between the multiple versions of the clip, we can open the clip in its version bin by right clicking on it and going to open in versions bin. And here we can see all of the versions imported linked to this clip. Here we can now drag and drop the different versions into the viewer to enable the wipe and have access to the other wipe modes available. For example, the horizontal side by side view where we can start comparing between the different versions. Or we could drag the different versions directly onto the timeline on different tracks and then hitting 1 and 2 on the track names, we can enable a wipe and start comparing our shots this way. As well as building our own sequence inside of Hero Player, we can also view our shots and their versions in the context of the other shots around it by opening the sequence that is being worked on in Hero or Nuke Studio which allows us to then check for continuity in our own shots. From the timeline, if you have your shot already in it, or the Nuke script, you can go straight away, right click on your comp, and go to versions and scan for versions. This will now bring in any new version there is of your shot, and by hitting V on the selected clip, you'll be able to see all of the available versions you can jump through. Having opened a project in Hero Player, you won't be able to edit any existing items on the current sequence, except for the version numbers of the clips. We can add clips to the timeline by creating a new track and then dragging the clips onto it. By default, our versions are going to be linked to the bin item, meaning if I change the version of this new clip on the timeline to another version, the other instances of this clip will be changed as well. 
We can unlink the version by right clicking on it and going to versions and unlink selected. Now when I make a change to one of the other instances of our clip, our now unlinked clip won't be affected. And this works both ways. So we could have multiple versions of the same clip on the timeline. We can also copy and paste clips that are locked on the timeline to our new track, making them now editable for us in Hero Player. Hero Player has a range of editorial tools that you can use, from being able to trim your clips to realigning the frames you want to focus on. The first tool we have is the Multi tool, which allows us to move and select items on the timeline and its functionality is equivalent to most of the other tools that I'll go over combined. We then have the Move Trim tool. This lets you manipulate the position of a shot or its output by either adding or removing the handles. The last tool in this group is the Select tool, which gives us the ability to quickly select sections of the timeline by using a lasso. We can hold Shift to add to the selection and Control to remove items from the selection. The next set of tools relate to how we can select the items on the timeline. Whether we want to select the track items to the right of what we had selected, to the left, select all of the items on the track, or select all of the tracks to the right of what we had selected, or all of the tracks to the left of what we had selected. If I select the track items to the right, when I click on the first item on my timeline, the other two clips will be selected. If I do the same for the left and I click on the middle item on our timeline, only that first track item to the left of what I had clicked on is selected. The next group of tools we have relate to how we can create or join edit points in our timeline. We first have the razor tool, which lets us add an edit and cut our shot into separate parts. You can use the T key to enable these. If we want to create an edit to all of the tracks in our sequence, we can use the Razor All tool. We can also join two clips together by using the Join tool, which can be used on the edit points between those razored shots. Then there are the Slip and Slide tools. First, the Slip tool. This allows you to shift the shot within its in and out points by the same amount in the same direction, so keeping its original duration, and we can access this by using the E shortcut. When using this tool we see multiple previews showing you what is now going to be the start point and the end point of our clip. If we click on the target clip we want to slip, the available handles are displayed and we can drag the shot to its new position. The next tool we have is the Slide Clip tool. This allows you to move a shot in relation to the item before or after the target item without changing its length or timeline output. So like the Slip tool, the shortcut for this is the E key which we hit twice to enable. So this means that the shot either side of our target are either shortened or lengthened within the limits of their handles to accommodate the slide of the target shot. The viewer will display the new end point of the previous shot in the timeline and the new start point of the following shot while still representing that first and last frame of our target shot, so giving us four preview images in the viewer. Following the slide tool, the final group of editorial tools we have start with the roll edit tool. When this is enabled, you are able to roll a single edit within the available handles to shorten one shot while lengthening the other using the short key R to enable this. You can roll your clip either manually with the mouse, or we can click on the edit point you want to adjust and nudge it using the comma or period keys. If we hold the shift key down along with the comma or period, we can nudge based on the frame increment that is set in the viewer. And again, using the viewer previews, we can see the first and last frame of the shot we are rolling. The next tool is the Ripple Edit tool, which is similar to the Move Trim tool, except it affects the shot after the clip we are editing, which will automatically close any resulting gaps. Finally, we have the Retime Clip tool. This lets you trim the shots in and out points to then automatically retime the clip to fill in its new shot duration. To enable this tool, we hit the R key three times. 
Then all you need to do is click and drag the end point to the new position, and once released the clip will be trimmed and retimed. Again, we can use the comma or period key, along with the shift keys to nudge the frames while the tool is active. To retime past the end of the shot handles, you can hold Ctrl or Command and drag your edit to its new location. While editing and reviewing our shots in the context of the sequence, we may want to start adding notes or annotations to particular frames, frame ranges or clips. And annotations are available in Hero Player by clicking on the paintbrush icon in the viewer to enable the annotation tool. We have a paint tool or a text tool that you can use to add an annotation either to the current frame, or if we want to add the annotations to a range of frames, we can add an annotation to the in and out point set, or we could set a custom range. We can also add to the current clip or to the whole sequence. To create an annotation, we first pick which tool we want to use, whether that is the paintbrush or the text tool. Then, by clicking on the add icon, we can set where we want to add our annotation and for what range we want it for. So for example, the current item we are looking at. And then click new. Whichever tool we use, we can set the colour we want it to be by clicking on the swatch and picking a colour from the colour wheel. We can also set the transparency of our annotations if we wanted to. Now we can start drawing our annotations. If we want to add a text note to the same part of the shot, we can do that by clicking on the text tool, then the add icon, and then clicking new. The text typed will have the same range as the first annotation we created, and that same colour we had set. But this can always be changed after we have added the text, while still in the edit mode of it. By clicking on the swatch again, and changing the colour. Annotations can also be transformed in the viewer once created, by clicking on them and dragging them to their new location. You can visually see in the timeline which frame or clip has an annotation on it by the blue line that appears on the frame or item. So if I scrub to the following or previous clip, you can see the annotations are not visible as there have not yet been any annotations added to these clips. As well as creating an annotation on the current item, we can also create annotations on the individual frames, or a particular frame range. So we can use the in and out point range we had set, and so again, using the paintbrush tool, we can set the range in the add options to in and out, and then click new. These new notes I create will now only be visible on this frame range we have set. We can also set a particular frame range we want to add our annotations to using the custom in the add annotations window where we can manually set the in point and the out point of the annotations. If we no longer want to see the annotations in the viewer we can use that same paintbrush icon we used to enable them to disable them. With all of these tools Hero Player has to review your work individually it also has the ability to speed up your review process by collaborating live with multiple artists and users across locations with the ability to connect or create a sync review session. To start, we have a new sync session workspace where we will be able to manage our session as a host or where we will connect to another session already created. You just need to make sure that everyone connecting has access to the media, whether that is local or on a server or cloud as well as everyone needs to be on the same release as you do, whether you are the host or the participant. For example, if you are in version 13.0 v4, so do all the other users connecting. To host the session, we need to click on host. Here we can set our name we want to display on the participant sessions, and we can pick the colour of our cursor. Then we need to set the host name or IP address and the port number in which we want the client sessions to connect to. This selection is then displayed in the connection information at the bottom of this pop-up window. We then need to copy this information and share it with the artists and users we want to connect to the session. To start hosting, we click on Start. The panel is now showing our details automatically and is ready for us to send the connection information out. To connect to a sync session, we use that same sync session panel, but this time we click on Connect. We have a similar pop-up window that appears when we are connecting to a session to the window for if we are hosting. Except for this time, we don't have the option to copy our connection information. So like if we are hosting a session, we set our name and cursor colour, 
And then all we need to do is paste in or set the host name and port number that was sent to us. And then we click connect to join the review session. As the participants join the session, they will be displayed in the sync session panel with their status showing who is connected or disconnected at any time. Once everyone is connected, if we start making changes, these will be happening live for all of the participants. So we can play back and change different playback modes. So let's say we wanted to bounce the playback of this section. Whoever clicks stop, it will stop on that frame for everyone connected. We can also move around inside of the viewer and change the different zoom levels. So everybody's looking at the same part of the image. Then we can view the different channels and layers available inside of the viewer. And if working with a multi-layered EXR, you can isolate the individual layers directly inside of the viewer. We can view and set the in and out points. And we have all of the different playback controls that you would need for a review session, as well as all of the editorial tools that I have shown you earlier in this video. For example, we can cycle through the different versions available for the shots in this project. Annotations are created live during a sync session, so by enabling them in the viewer, whether you are the host or a participant, you can create new annotations live for everyone connected. For example, if I use the paint tool, you can see as I create this new annotation, it appears for the other participants. With everyone being able to view and create annotations, the users connected can work collaboratively together, making sure that everybody is on the same page. We can open Nuke scripts directly from Hero Player during our sync session by right clicking and opening it in a new Nuke session, which will launch Nuke external to Hero Player. Now, during the sync session, or once the sync session has completed, we can go ahead and start addressing those changes directly from the timeline. So during a sync session, we've made some changes and have rendered out a new version of this current comp we're looking at. Back inside of Hero Player, we can right click on that clip and go scan for versions. Hero Player will find the new version and now everyone connected during that sync session has access to that latest version of that shot. So we can go ahead directly inside of that sync session and start comparing those changes to the previous version. There are some tasks where the changes need to be pushed to the other participants during a sync session. For example, if I wanted to add a tag to a particular shot or frame on the sequence. You'll see as I add a tag to this particular shot in the sequence, the tag has only been created for one of the users in this session. In order for the tag to be synced across the rest of the users, we need to push this change. So from the sync session panel, all we need to do is click on the button to push that change across and the project will resync for all of the users connected. As a user connected to the sync session, you can disconnect at any time without affecting anyone else connected. You can do this by clicking on the disconnect button, which disconnects you from the session and closes the project. For everyone else still connected, you'll appear offline in the sync session panel. As the host, we can end the session for everyone else connected by clicking on end session. This will then close the project for everyone else connected and you are then able to save any changes that were made. For more information about Hero Player and what you can do with it, you can check out our website and learn more about how you and your team can get Hero Player, as well as request your free Hero Player license. Thanks for watching.